just get started at the top of our mat into Dasana Mountain Pose. Feet hip distance just to start. We're going to fold in a second and want a little bit of space. Take your hands by your side. Make sure your gaze is forward. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, close your eyes. moment here to breathe in and out through your nose, finding your ujjayi breath. We're going to move and flow together. We're going to get straight into it, actually. So just take a brief moment, not more than 15 seconds here, to really center yourself, feeling the feet rooting down through the earth, the legs strong, firm, the core drawing in, broadening across the collarbones. Take one clearing breath together, inhale. Open your mouth, side out. Open your eyes. Inhale, reach your arms forward to come up. Spread your fingers. Get tall to the sides of the waist. Then turn your hands out, and as you exhale, sweep them behind your back and release your fingers. Press the palms together and try to keep a little bend in the elbows. Your arms are internally rotating at the upper arm bone. Keep that, but broaden across the collarbones. Then inhale, just do a little lift of the chest, keeping the core firm. Exhale, put a little bend in your knees and forward, fold down. No matter how flexible you are, that little bend in the knees in the beginning of your practice is so important to just keeping your back safe, your hamstrings safe. Keeping that tiny bend in the knees, just begin to reach the knuckles overhead, continuing to think about rolling the arm bones in as you broaden the collarbone. Then sweep your hands down towards the mat. Inhale to a flat back. You can begin to straighten your legs if that's an available to you right now in your practice. But think about lifting the quads to do so, really feeling the muscular structure of your legs supporting your joints. And then exhale, fold it down. Grab a hold of opposite elbows. Use the weight of your arms to really weigh yourself down. The crown of the head reaches towards the ground. A few deep breaths here, feeling equal weight between the heels and the balls of the feet. If you want a little more, you can push the outer feet out. That'll internally rotate the belly. Stick the sit bones up. Lengthen the sides of your waist. Fingertips underneath the shoulders. Inhale to a flat back. From here, I want you to take your hands down. So if you need to bend your knees to get there, do so. Take your palms up so that the fingers face the midline of the mat. We're going to do a little bit of wrist stretching and warming up in the Uttanasana position. Remember, this is a level two, three class, so I am going to get straight into some uh, invigorating, challenging postures. Uh, so if you need to modify it anytime, please feel free to do so. A little bend in the elbows here, pushing the base of the wrist down as you spread the fingers wide. If you want to straighten your legs, you can. Pull the navel in. From here, turn the hands around, but this time your fingertips facing your toe tips. Just a nice way to balance out what you just did. Spreading the fingers, a little bend in the elbows again, and really get that stretch into the inseam of the forearm. Grip the ground with the fingertips. Breathe. And then from here, fingertips underneath the shoulders. Inhale to a flat back. One of my favorite ways to really get my blood pumping, heat building in my body is to do plank pose early on, even before down dog. So we're going to do that here. Make sure that your hands are shoulders distance. Step one foot back and then the other. You can keep your feet hips distance. If you really want to invigorate the inseam of your legs, get your legs helping your core, bring your feet together. Firm the thighs in towards one another. Engage the outer glutes. Pull the navel in. Now make sure that you grip down with your fingertips, root down through the index finger knuckles. And as you squeeze your forearms in, spread your shoulder blades wide and breathe. Maybe even smile. <laughs> Smiling in something challenging always helps me get through it. We're here for two more breath cycles. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. One more. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. Then inhale fully, exhale, lift the tush up, downward facing dog. We can begin to raise the heels down towards the earth. Really feeling the 
benefit of this pose is strengthening of the arms, the lengthening of the back body. Breathing in and out through the nose. We're going to take one slow vinyasa together, and then we'll do two just rapidly one breath per movement to get all of that internal heat building. Inhale, shift forward into plank pose, shoulders over wrists. You probably have to step your feet back a little bit. Then shift forward all the way to the tips of the toes. Anytime you need to modify with the knees down, do so. Exhale, lower down, bend the elbows, chaturanga. All the way to the belly. I like to move my hands back so they're underneath the elbows. Untuck my toes, lift the shoulder tips and start to peel my chest up. Pulling the hands back towards the feet, smiling the collarbones open, maybe even the lips curl up into a smile. Exhale, lower all the way back down. This is one of my favorite things to do to challenge myself. From the ground, I want to find a plank-like position. Tuck my toes under, firm the elbows in, grip with the fingertips, pull the core in, then inhale, push all the way up into plank, then exhale, downward facing dog. Remembering that I'm inviting you to challenge yourself in this level two, three class together, but if at any time you need to modify, do so. We're gonna take two vinyasas, one breath per movement. I'll offer upward facing dog. Inhale, shift forward into plank. Use your full exhalation, lower down to plank. Inhale, big inhalation, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And again. Inhale, shift forward, plank. Exhale, bend the elbows to the Inhale. Upward facing dog, lift the inner thighs. Exhale, downward facing dog. Hmm. Taking a few deep breaths here. Feeling those strong hands, arms, and shoulders. Finding length in the sides of the wrist. Moving on to building a little more heat. Surya Namaskar A. I'll do one round with you where we step forward and step back. And then we'll do some jumping to add in some inversion. Bring your feet together. Look forward. Come high up on your toes. Bend your knees. Step your right foot forward and then your left. Big toes touching. A little space between the heels. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale to fold. Inhale, root to rise. All the way up to standing. Sweeping the arms out and up. Gaze up as the palms touch. Exhale, hands come to your knees. So we'll start our first round of Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, reach the arms out. Exhale, dive it forward. The hands can come down to the center or go out wide. Find the fold. Inhale to a flat back. Plant the palms flat. Make sure there's integrity in that foundation. Step your left foot back. Then your right foot back. Plank pose. Inhale forward. Exhale, Chaturanga. Through that Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's complete that round. Inhale, come high up on your toes. Look forward, bend your knees. Exhale, this time step your left foot forward and then your right foot forward. Big toes touching, little space between the heels. Inhale, flat back. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rising all the way up, sweeping the arms out to come up. Gaze up as the palms touch. Exhale, hands to the lips. I'm feeling quite warm now. Hopefully you are too. I'm going to start to add in some jumping with our Surya Namaskar A. And remember, you can just really take it slow, take it easy. If you really like to invert like I do, you might take it a little further into a cannonball pack. Inhale, reach the arms out to come up. Exhale, dive it forward. And Inhale to a flat back. Going to add in a little bit of that hopping here. So step your feet back just a tad. Make sure that you're in a bit of a shorter down dog. Plant the palms flat underneath the shoulders. Gaze between your wrists. So if you do that and you push down through your hands, you'll hollow out the front body. Then come high up on your toes. Bend your knees. We're going to land back here in this same exact position. We're going to hop up. Really try to kick our heels to our butt and then land back down. Keep a nice, tiny little compact shape. One more time. Jump up. Land your feet back down and then step it back. 
through the vinyasa. Making sure your breath is guiding the movement. Once you find downward facing dog, come back to that ujjayi breath. Try not to judge yourself based upon the result of those actions. Whatever it was, it was. We'll try it again a couple more times. So let's complete this round. Bring your feet together. Firm the thighs in. The strength of the legs really matters here, as well as the strength of the rest of your entire body. Look forward. Come high up on the toes and bend the knees. This one might be a little bit easier because there's more space between your feet and your hands. Jump up, take your heels to your butt one time. Land back down. Go again two times. And on that third one, can you jump up and land your feet between your hands? Maybe not graceful. Sometimes I don't feel graceful either, but that's okay. Inhale, flat back. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Last round. Let's keep it moving. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold down. Inhale to a flat back. Plant your palms flat. Go into a bit of a shorter down dog. Come high up on the toes. Bend the knees with three hops. One, try to kick your heels to your butt. Keep the legs together, two. And on that last one, two, you can land back down or see what it's like to take it back through that vinyasa into chaturanga. Downward facing dog. I love practicing at home, just like you are. And I really like it when I'm at home and practicing and my practice is really efficient. It keeps moving and flowing. So that's what I'm going to keep doing here. But remember, if you need to take a rest, feel free to take a child's pose. Bring your feet together. This is the last round. <laughs> Look forward. Come high up on the toes. This is actually the last part of the last round. Bend your knees and exhale. Go for three kicks. One. Heels to butt. On the front. Two. Last one. On three. Jump up. And as graceful as you can, land up on the mat. Inhale. Flat back. Exhale. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to your heart. Good job, Yogi. Take a moment. Close your eyes. You can have your hands by your side. To connect with your breath. Using that Ujjayi breath can be a really effective way to stop panting <laughs> or hyperventilating. And just recollect both the physical and the emotional side of things. Hmm. Let's move into Surya Namaskar B. Open your eyes. Bend your knees. Tap the ground with your fingertips so you get nice and low. And then inhale, reach your arms up into Utkatasana. If it's too much for your arms, I would even recommend having the hands by your side. Or your hands by your side. So I really want you to focus on your legs here. Working the legs is so important. And so many of us yogis overstretch our legs. So see if you can move your weight back into your heels. So when you look down, you see your toe tips. Firm the outer hips in as well as the inner thighs in. And then sink down a little bit deeper, feeling the quads, the hamstrings, even the glutes working. And then if your hands weren't up, add it in just for this brief moment. Inhale. And as you exhale, rise up on the balls of your feet. Now strengthening the arches of the feet and the ankles. See if you can slowly sit all the way down onto the heels. And then open the knees out wide. Lean your torso forward to your best ability between the legs. You can even drop the head down. We're prepping for Valkasana Crow Pose. We've done a lot of Chaturanga so far. So remember that Crow Pose is, the foundation of Crow Pose is in that Chaturanga. But first we need to really open up the groins because we do need the groins open. We need the belly drawing in and the shoulders warm. From here, come up onto your hands. Hands underneath the shoulders. Lift your butt up, push through the calves to really spread the shoulder blades and put a little bit in the elbows. Work the knees high up on the triceps, squeeze the knees into the midline, and then lean forward so that there's more weight in your hands and your feet. Left foot lifts, point the toes, kick the heel to the butt, and then your right foot. And if it's too much for you, you can do one foot at a time. If you don't want to jump it back, just step it back through the vinyasa, or take it straight back to chaturanga, finding your Vinyasa into downward facing dog. Breathing here. We've worked the upper body. We've opened the front body. We've worked the front body too. Now we're going to work the legs a bit more. 
Inhale, reach your right leg up and back. It should feel good to open the hip. If you want to bend the knee, go ahead and do so, just for a brief moment. See what it's like to square your shoulders, to work the outer left hip back and in. Take a deep breath in. Then as you exhale, keeping the right knee bent, shift forward into a plank pose. Pull the right knee into the chest, working the front body, but also working the right hamstring, keeping the heel to the butt. Two more. Inhale, reach. Exhale, curl. One more. Inhale, reach up and back. Exhale, curl. Reach to the hands. Step your right foot forward. Place your left knee down. Scoot it back a little bit, then straighten your right leg. Coming onto your right heel, flex your right foot. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, fold on the honeymoon. Really great stretch for the hamstrings, but for those of you who have tight calves and are pretty sore right now, this is a really great calf stretch too. Firm the inner thighs in, that abduction of the thighs really helps to square the hips and protect the hamstrings. Lift the quadricep muscle and then fold down a little bit more. Inhale to a flat back. Bend into your right knee. Tuck your left toes under, especially if you have knee pain in, in that back foot or back knee, I should say. And then inhale, rise it up under the muscle. This is nice for that back leg hip flexor quadricep area. But don't forget that it's also toning the muscular structure of the hamstring of the right leg. So think about pulling the right foot to the back of the mat, lifting the inner thigh or hugging the inner thighs and lifting from the base of the pelvis up. From here, inhale, gaze up as the palms come to touch. Exhale, place your fingertips down. Lift your left knee up off the ground this time. Move the ball of the left foot back until you feel like the heel's right over it. Then inhale, rise up into crescent pose. Make sure your feet are hips distance and you're not walking a tight rope. Squeeze the thighs together, draw the low belly in, push the left heel back and lift the inner left thigh up. Take a deep, strong breath here. And exhale, taking your hands down, stepping your right foot back, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Moving to the other side. Inhale, reach your left leg up and down. Bend the knee, open the hip. And even though that left knee is lifting and opening at the hip, keep your shoulders squared and that right outer hip working. Let's work our core. Inhale fully. Exhale, shift into a plank pose. Pull the left thigh into the chest. Spread the shoulder blades wide and really pull that left hip up. Two more. Inhale, reach. Exhale, pull in. Inhale, reach. Exhale, pull in, use that core strength and that shoulder strength to really lift the butt up, stepping your left foot forward. Place your right knee down on the ground. Scoot the right knee back, straighten the left leg. Flex the left foot, inhale to a flat back. Exhale, fold it down. From here, inhale, flat back. Exhale, bend into that left knee. Right knee stays down. You can tuck your toes under if you have any knee pain. Inhale, rise it up on your Now, feel free to bend deeply into that left knee, but think about really pulling the navel in, engaging the left hamstring by pulling the left foot back towards the back of the mat. Inhale, lift the heart. Gaze up as the palms come to touch. Exhale, sweep the hands down. You're on your fingertips. Lift your right knee up off the ground. Make sure the right toes are tucked under. And you might need to elongate your stance a little bit. Ball of the right foot underneath the right heel. Inhale, rising up into crescent. If this bothers your hip flexors at all, a little bit or low back, a little bend in your back leg knee will help. Draw the navel, the ribs in, and then you can begin to straighten that back leg. Lift the back ribs up. Take a deep inhalation here. Exhale, taking your hands down, stepping your left foot back in the plank pose, all the way through that vinyasa. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Breathe in here. Two rounds together, one breath per movement. It's time to this Surya B mix.
mixed with some fun stuff, I'll add in a crow and some handstand hops. Bring your feet together. Squeeze the thighs together, look forward. Come high up on the toes, bend your knees. Think of that cannonball pipe. We're just gonna do one and jump forward. Jump up, kick your heels to your butt. Land at the front of the mat. Inhale, do a flat back. Exhale to fold it down. Inhale, rising all the way up. Gaze up as the palms touch. Exhale, hands to your back. Round one. We're going to flow through it. One breath and movement all the way back here after round two. You got this. Bend your knees, tap the ground. Inhale, reach the arms up, Utkatasana. Rise up onto the balls of the feet. Open the knees, squat down. If this is too much for you, you can always skip the crow, take it back through the vinyasa, or rise up onto the triceps. Really think about protracting the shoulder blades, and then really pull the heels up towards the glutes, squeeze the hamstrings. Inhale, exhale, jump it back, find your vinyasa. Downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg rises. Exhale, knee to nose, spread the shoulder blades, step to the left foot forward. This time we're going to spin that left heel down. Hip distance is my preference for warrior one, or maybe heel to heel. Inhale, rise. Draw that outer right hip back, really root the outer foot down. Take a deep inhalation here. Exhale, taking your hands down. Slide the right foot back a little bit and lift your left leg up. So instead of a standing splits position, we're going to go for a supporting warrior three. It's just a better entrance point to your handstand hop. Squeeze the inner thighs into one another. Pull the navel in. You might need to bend your right knee a little to plant your palms flat down. Look between your wrists, not your thumbs. Rise up under the ball of the right foot. Bend the right knee and just see what it's like to take a little tiny hop. It can be an inch off the ground. Do that again. Maybe five inches off the ground. One more time, hop up, and then step it back through the knee. Oh. facing dog. I'm starting to sweat. Hopefully you are too. Remembering to breathe as well. Inhale, left leg. Reach it up and back. Exhale, step it all the way forward. Spin your right heel down, heel to heel, or hips to hips, warrior one. Inhale, rise up. This round, we're going to take a little bit of time, maybe just an extra breath cycle to really align our warrior ones. Try to strengthen the legs and the core. Inhale, forward. Exhale, taking your hands down to the mat. Stay on the fingertips. Slide your left foot back a bit. Lift your right leg up. It's important to keep the hips squared. The legs fully engaged. I like to point my toes for handstand. I find that it brings my hips over easier. Plant your palms flat down, gaze between your wrists, inhale to the ball of the left foot, bend the left knee, just take a tiny little hop, keeping the arms straight, <coughs> focusing on moving the hips, do it again, over the shoulders, one more, and then step back, do the rest. Wall of foam 
and you'd rather move to the wall to do this, feel free to do so. You can go and do a handstand, take that quick, nice, solid handstand, and then take it back through your sinyasa. So arms are getting tired, mind is getting pretty tired, feel free to stick to the sinyasa. Last side, you've got this. Inhale, left leg rises up. Exhale, step it forward. Warrior one. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, take the fingertips down. Slide that left foot back a bit. Another great tip for these handstand hops. As you lift that right leg up, just make sure you have at least a ruler's distance between your hands and the tip of the left toes. Inhale, to fall the foot. Bend the knee and hop. Squeeze the thighs together. Think about drawing that left thigh bone <coughs> into the hip socket. Engage the legs. Maybe <coughs> you find that nice straight handstand. Oh, that's good. Find your vinyasa or meet me in downward facing. Great job. Following me, hopefully, I haven't lost you. <laughs> but great job, nonetheless. Here. We've been moving, we've been flowing for quite some time. Give yourself the credit. Whether or not you can do some of the things, it doesn't even matter. It's the fact that you showed up on your mat today. We're going to move into some externals, some warrior twos and whatnot, and that will give us the opportunity to slow down a little bit. But before we get there, I want you to take your feet as wide as a mat, turn your heels in, your toes out. Look forward, come high up on the toes, bend the knees, knees, jump your feet around your hands. Squat down into a wide-legged malasana, heels in, toes out. Use your elbows and your inner knees to push the knees out wide and feel the outer edges of the feet taking most of the weight. If you want to challenge your glute strength here, you can do the same position without the elbows on the knees. I find that if I elevate my stance, meaning lift my hips up a little bit more, I find that it's a little bit more effective in strengthening my glutes. <laughs> my shoulders. <laughs> Take your right tricep to the inside of the right knee, right arm out to the side, reach your left arm up. <laughs> if your shoulders are quite open and you enjoy a bit more of a stretch, you can take your left arm behind your back, grab the right inner thigh. And if you want even more, you can take the full arms here. Making sure to press the left knee away from you, the right knee away from you as well. Opening that left shoulder. <coughs> Inhale back to center. And then switch sides. Really try to get that left tricep down on the inside of the left knee. Reach the left arm out towards the left. Reach your right arm up. And maybe you're binding as well. Or taking a half back. Because that right arm's behind you, think about internally rotating. So pressing your right bicep down towards the side ribs, the opening of your shoulder. Uh, Inhale back to center. Ooh, the knee over the uh, Fingertips down, straighten the legs, slowly turn the toes in, put a little bend in the knees, hold it all the way down. Great job. Try to lift your torso. 
torso away from the ground and revolve that left shoulder open. You got this. Push down through the right heel. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Maybe even straighten that right leg. I know I needed to reverse tree from last night. Inhale, come on back to center. Bring your hands to your hips and just switch sides. Turn your right foot in. Send your left foot now to the front of the mat and bend into your left knee. Making sure to align the feet up correctly. Left heel in line with the right arch. Bring with a little point forward of my right foot. Just to ensure that my knee is protected. It's at the same angle as that right foot. Then open the arms out wide. Finding that strong foundation in the legs here. Working that outer left glute. Drawing the lower belly in. And finding that fierce warrior within. From here. Exhale, bringing that left forearm to the top of the left thigh. Right arm straight up. Unless you took it a little bit further, then you can take it down. Then you can take it on the ground or into that half or full bind. Using the bind to really work on the strength of your legs, specifically that left leg. Then the core draws in and that right shoulder opens. Maybe you even look up. Push down through that left heel. Inhale, reverse triangle. Straighten that left leg. Reaching that left hand up and back. Stretching with those strong hip flexors that were just compressed. And exhale back to center. Bring your hands to your hips. Turn your toes both in. Inhale, lift the heart up high. And exhale, folding all the way down. the Kaz Masana. Just depending on your energy right now, you can always hang out here. If it's more about stretching the hamstrings, then you can grab your ankles and pull the crown of the head down. If you want to reap the benefits of an inversion right now, uh, increased circulation and all sorts of great things, then we can take tripod headstand, only if your neck is healthy. Hands underneath the elbows, crown of the head down, tip up high onto the balls of the feet, and push down through the hands. Keep the elbows hugging in, let the legs hover up off the ground, sweeping them out, and then together. Once they come together, engage the feet, foot, flex, point, whatever works for you. Squeeze the inner thighs, pull the core in. <sighs> Open the legs out wide. If you're upside down, see how slowly you can bring the legs back down. Good job. Inhale to a flat back, no matter where you're sitting. A little bend the knees. Exhale, hands to your back. Now turn to the front of your mat. Step your right foot towards your left. Big toes touching. Inhale, bend the knees. Tap the ground, reaching the arms up. Gaze up as your palms touch. Exhale, hands come to your heart. You're going to twist your left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Firming the inner thigh together. Drawing the navel gently in. Then pushing the left elbow down, revolving the shoulders open. A little extra challenge here. Come on to the ball of your left foot. A little bit straighter in that right leg. See, you can slowly hover your left foot up off the ground. Then see how slowly, with engagement, this is not easy, extend your left foot all the way back into Paravita Parashvakonasana, or your twisted crescent pose. If this is too much for you, the left knee can come down. You can rework yourself deeper into the twist if you like. And really begin to stabilize your pelvis. Whether the back knee is on or off the ground, firm the inner thighs to one another. Draw the outer right hip back. And see if you can begin to revolve so that your hands one day end up right at the chest center. Look down. Step that left foot next to your right. Come back to chair pose. Forward. We're going to stand all the way up. Bring your hands to your heart. Take your feet up. I know I really needed that rest. And we'll move it to the other side. We're almost there. You're doing a great job. Bend your knees, tap the ground. Inhale, reach the arms up, reach the tension. Exhale, hands to the heart, twist to the other side. Right elbow to the outside of the left knee. First, really begin to stabilize your legs and your pelvis. Draw your low belly in, firm the inner thighs together, and then twist. Look down, come to the ball of your right foot. See if you can begin to shift the weight into your left foot. Send your right foot back towards your Parvita Parjvakanasana. Knee can come 
come down for a moment, just to readjust your twist, maybe get it a little deeper. Then from there, firm the thighs in. If you want to lift that back knee up off the ground again, do so. Any arm variations that work for you here, twist over. Keeping your core drawing in. Look down and slowly step your right foot to meet your left. Inhale back to that chair pose. Exhale, sit all the way down onto your toes. Great job. So we got the blood pumping, the heat internal all the way up. We flowed, we inverted. Let's work our core. <laughs> you ready? Lie on down. Hug your knees into your chest. Extend your left leg forward. Flex your left foot. And for an extra challenge, I want you to keep your left heel up off the ground. If it's too much, you can put it down. From here, extend your right leg straight up. If this is too much for you, tighten the hamstring of your back body. You could bend the right knee. Inhale, reach the arms overhead. Interlace all the fingers and thumb in the index. Squeeze the thighs together so the legs don't move too much. As you exhale, lift the shoulder blades up and twist your arms to the outside of your right leg. Inhale, drop back. This time, exhale, take your arms between the legs, push them up to center. Inhale, drop back. Your head's all the way back. Switch your legs and then exhale, twist to the left. Let's do that a few more times. Inhale, drop back. A little faster. Exhale, lift up to center. Inhale, drop back. Switch legs. Exhale, twist to the right. You got it. Inhale, drop back. Exhale to center. Inhale, drop back. Switch legs. Exhale to the right. Keep going. Drop back. Inhale. Exhale, lift up to center. Inhale, drop back. Switch legs. Exhale to the right. Inhale, drop back. Exhale to center. Inhale, drop back. Switch legs. Exhale to the left. Two more rounds. Inhale, drop back. Exhale to center. Inhale, drop back. Switch legs. Exhale to the right. Good. You got this. Keep going. Drop back. Center. Exhale. Drop back. Switch legs. Exhale to the left. Inhale, drop back. Exhale to center. Inhale, drop back. Switch legs. Exhale to the right. Now this time, put your left heel down. Bend your right knee. Take your left hand to the outside of the right knee and twist. You deserve it. Great job. Open your right arm out towards the right. Bend the right elbow. It's more about opening your shoulders. Breathe. Remember, give yourself credit for stepping onto the mat today. For working, moving, breathing, sweating. For being present. Doing things that challenge you. You deserve the same place. Inhale, coming back to center. Pull your right knee in, your left knee in, and just switch sides. Extend the right leg forward. Take the left knee out towards the right. Twist it out. Open your left arm to the left. Face towards the left hand. And think about creating length in the left side body. So using your mind's eye, push your left hip away from the left shoulder. And root the left shoulder down. Inhale, come on back to center. Pull the knees into the chest. Now I'm going to offer you bridge to Urdhva Dhanurasana. This is the point in the practice where I want you to open your shoulders and think about opening the front of your body. So if you have a back bend that serves you better, feel free to do it. From here, place your feet flat down on the mat. Feet hips distance. Make sure your shins are in a straight line so that when you push down through the heels, you feel like you can strengthen the legs. Lift the hips up into bridge pose. Work from shoulder to shoulder. Interlace the fingers under your feet. Press the palms together. Take a deep inhalation. And as you exhale, pull the heels towards the shoulders. That will engage the hamstrings. Draw the ribs and the navel in. Make sure the knees don't externally rotate from the femurs. Undo the interlace of your hands. Plant your hands next to your head. Rise to the crown of your head. Turn the hands out just slightly. Hug the elbows in. And rise up off the crown of the head. Notice if your feet have turned out, make sure they point forward. That will protect the lower back. 
Draw the navel in and begin to press your chest between the gateway of the arms. Push down through the heels of the hands. Take a deep inhalation here. And exhale, drop back down. Hmm. On to your back. Heel toe the feet as wide as the mat. Let the knees drop in. Take your hands to your lower belly. Close your eyes. Just let any low back compression begin to release. And the expansion of the back bend really do its work. Back bends can be invigorating, but also confronting at times. Just sit with it. Open your eyes. Keeping your left foot on the outside edge of the mat, just cross your right ankle over the left knee and let both knees fall towards the right. So this one can be a bit of a challenge to feel. A lot of times when students or yogis don't feel it, it's because their hips are too lifted. So think about drawing the tailbone forward towards the front of the mat as you weigh that left inner leg down. If you have any knee pain, then you might just take that right foot off the knee. I feel this in the outer edge of my left hip, in the outer edge of my thigh, around the IT band. Really nice release. And then inhale back to center, keeping the right ankle over the left knee, heel toe the left foot to center. And just draw the knees into the chest, reclined here. Taking your right arm through the heel between the legs, the left arm on the outside of the leg, maybe grabbing a hold of the shin for something a bit deeper, or into the hamstring for a little bit of a lighter stretch. And any variations you might want to work into from here, if you want to forklift that right leg and put the left foot down, maybe extend the left leg forward, feel free to do so. And just opening that right hip. Inhale, exhale, release. We're almost done. Just switch inside. Right foot to the outside edge of the mat. Left ankle over the right knee. Let both knees fall towards the left. Drawing the tailbone forward, flexing both feet. And remember, all of our bodies are so different. So if you're feeling this in a different place, that's your body. That's completely fine as long as it's not painful. Last pose here. Inhale back to center. Keeping the left ankle over the right knee. Heel toe the right foot back to the center of the mat. Send the left arm through the keyhole. The right arm around the outside edge. And take your final pose. But that's not the final pose of practice. We still have Shavasana. Any variations you took from here? Take your fourth lift, extend the leg, lift the back. Take a deep inhalation. And exhale, release. Open equally into the chest. And then extending both legs forward, letting your feet drop open, the arms out to the side. Side out, close your eyes. If you have enough time to dedicate to one of the most important poses in the practice, feel free to take Shavasana as long as it serves you. Take a deep inhalation through the nose, and as you exhale, close your eyes. to stay here as long as it serves you. Thank you so much for practicing with me.